Frisco is the only town holding an election on April 3rd, and Ballot Measure 2B is stirring controversy. It asks residents to vote on development for a plot of land that is already home to a pocket park and an old community center, known as the Third and Granite Building. It is currently home to SOS Outreach and used for town programs like the Turkey Day 5K. The Frisco Housing Task Force identified it as one of three sites ready for immediate construction to fill the town's workforce housing needs. Task Force Chairman Mark Sabatini believes affordable housing is the best use for Third and Granite, but the ballot question leaves it open to development of any kind, and a small group of residents has petitioned against the measure. Crystal 93 spoke with Sabatini to learn more about Measure 2B, the Housing Task Force, and why he believes now is the best time to build. Phil Lindemann, Crystal 93 News Director, in the studio today with Mark Sabatini. He's a Frisco local and chair of the Frisco Housing Task Force. Mark, thanks for making time to come in today. Well, thank you, Phil, very much. Yeah, and I, we've got an election coming up, and that's why we're in here today, talking about the task force and the, uh, the Frisco ballot. First, though, I wanted to start with the task force. What exactly was the task force? Uh, why was it created, and uh, what has come out of the task force? Thanks, Phil. The Housing Task Force was established by the town council, by staff in town, to develop a business plan for the delivery of workforce housing in Frisco. We all know that housing <clears throat> and the availability thereof is probably the thorniest challenge any of the communities have at this point in time, and we are all dealing with that. The task force, again, was asked to prepare a business plan for the delivery of housing. Um, the, the task force was assembled from volunteers, uh, myself, uh, civil engineers, realtors, landscape architects, construction professionals, and probably most importantly, business owners, small business owners. We local small business, because that's who this, in the end, was supposed to be serving, was uh, you know, getting back to the workforce. From that assemblage of folks, we met twice a month for two hours each day. We began discussing the, the challenges. We talked about costs, and we identified almost two dozen properties that were, quote unquote, suitable for the delivery of housing. Subsequent to identification and mapping of those parcels, we began to prioritize opportunities to do just that, build housing. And as I understand it, Frisco is, it's very tight on space. It, probably one of the tightest towns in Summit County. When you guys were looking at, uh, at the sites, what was the, the average size of these sites? You are correct. We do not have tremendous greenfield capability in, in Frisco. We looked at parcels that were a quarter of an acre, a third of an acre, a half of an acre. We did identify a couple of larger parcels in private ownership, not ownership managed or, or where the town was involved, and looked at those parcels as well for delivery of the housing product. We also had conversations about mixed use projects. We talked about office retail housing in some of those larger parcels. But then decided to go with the with the slightly smaller ones, but more importantly, the ones that were already owned by the town did not come with maybe an additional expense on top of uh, you know what it would take to build. Correct. I mean, as part of the prioritization, the lowest hanging fruit is clearly raw land or underdeveloped land that has no debt placed upon it. We chose. For a more detailed study, three parcels. A parcel located at 113 Granite, adjacent to the historic park. The, what's called the old senior center, which is located at 3rd and Granite. We also looked at the Sabatini lot, which is a parcel of land that my grandfather bought 
years ago, years ago, in the 30s, which we sold to the town in 1996. Each of those properties is either underdeveloped or undeveloped. And we felt the best opportunity in the immediate term was to take a more detailed look at those three properties. And that process, uh, like you said, that began, when did the task force, when was it assembled? We, we engaged with the task force in the spring of 2017, I believe early May, late April, early May. And again, we met twice a month for two, two and a half hours each time we met, you know, in order to move this conversation forward. And uh, after you identified those three parcels, like you said, those were the ones that really did fit the criteria that um, the town was looking for, that the task force was also looking for, and that in the end, the workforce was needing. Um, what stuck out about those three particular parcels? Why were they good fits for development? Well, I think point number one, they have no debt on them. So at least in a preliminary pro forma, the land cost is, is, is negligible. Secondly, each of those properties is within one half block of Main Street. I, I think one of the takeaways the task force had in all of our conversation is that density in the core area of town is cost effective creative and responds to the need of uh, folks that want to live and be part of Frisco. Yeah, people who want to be able to walk to work or bike to work or be close to wherever it is that they have to be. The Abs workforce. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, we, we looked a little bit further in our conversations. Proximity to transit, adjacent Adjacent, each of these parcels is adjacent to water and sewer and all the shallow utilities that, that are required to develop and build a project, regardless of type. And in the end, uh, they met all those criteria. The next step then, what was the next step for the task force? So after IDing these properties? After identification, we, we engaged in a series of conversations with the landowners, the large employers, Safeway, Centura Health, the local businesses. The task force then took our prioritized recommendations and developed what is called a design charrette. We engaged architects, the civil engineers, the landscape architects, we asked, we asked the banks I believe Alpine Bank, uh, with one of the members uh, of their management sitting on the task force, we spent an entire day at the senior center. We visited each site. They're all walkable. They're all within two blocks of one another. We talked about context, about neighborhood, about fit, about access, pedestrian uh, opportunities and and spent the better part of a morning visioning what could be okay. I think it's important to to know too that in that charrette we looked we also looked at the property immediately across the street from town hall which I believe is 101 Main Street um, it's an existing building it's an existing commercial building it's adjacent to and immediately west of the historic park. We looked at that, envisioned a project that likely would be redevelopment of an existing commercial structure with apartment or some sort of smaller apartment style living as part of that project. It was decided, the, the task force decided that that perhaps was a bit more complex an undertaking and we assigned it a bit lower priority. 
again, the immediate term delivery, immediate, meaning year 2018, 113 granite, third and third and main, or excuse me, third and granite street, the old senior center, and likely the next project would be on the Sabatini lot, largely because it's vacant land. Okay. And uh, like you said, immediate was another one of the very big goals for the task force. And after looking through the, the task force update, you know, the, the final uh, product that you brought to uh, town council, construction, if approved on some of these sites, could get going within w- this spring, April or May, and hopefully be able to have people moving in by end of 2018? Or would it be more like uh, 2019, early 2019, middle middle 2019? Well, to, to answer the question, you know, as soon as a developer builder is given notice to proceed, the projects can commence easily within 45 days from today, 45 to 60 days. That would, that would yield delivery at the earliest late 2018 it would certainly yield delivery on into 2019 perhaps february march of 2019 okay but either way would get going pretty quick now pretty quickly (laughs) now and that is why uh, the the ballot issue that's why we're looking at it coming up on the uh, the ballot to be um looking at that and that is specifically about the community center site or the old community center site um that is that is correct okay Uh, and tell me a little bit about that because that property itself um it's got a little bit of a history uh and it is zoned in a certain way that um is making it a little confusing maybe for local residents and also uh, locals who are worried about, you know, building there. Um, what is the history of that project and how exactly did it fit into, uh, you know, the task force's, uh, you know, review? Well, you know, the history of the project is that years ago, that, pro- that property, the old, the former senior center, the old senior center was the maintenance building for the town of Frisco's public works department. There were snow plows, there were trucks, there was storage on that property, in that building for a number of years. That property was determined or determined to be surplus for that use when the town built the maintenance building adjacent to uh, what is now the Summit Middle School. Um, As I recall, at that point in time, the uh, Summit County seniors approached the town requesting that it be utilized as a senior center, as a public meeting space, as a place for uh, weekly dinners, weekly lectures, et cetera, et cetera. And as I recall further, that portion of the property that was landscaped immediately south of the existing structure was exactly that. It was a landscaping effort to perhaps soften the image of the property from adjacent apartments and and to soften the image a bit for the folks that used Granite Street. Mm -hmm. I I think it's very important to remember that this property is not zoned as a park. It was given a park designation for some purposes that I do not recall, but the entire property is zoned as Central Core in the town of Frisco. Central Core requirements allow three-story structures with small setbacks as long as parking requirements can be met. Okay, Um, so the zoning does allow for uh, basically construction on there of affordable housing or other things. Why then is it on the ballot? Why is uh, the town asking residents to uh, vote yes or no on should it be, you know, Least. Well, in, 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 in conversation with staff, 
they've informed us there apparently is some language in the town charter that requires that process to take place in order to best utilize the developable real estate that now sits at the corner of Third and Granite. So the citizens need to be asked uh, about best use, and that's what it comes down to, is whether or not they think this particular uh, thing is the best use for it, uh, or if it should you know, remain as is for now. That's my understanding, yes. Okay, great. Um, what do you think uh, locals, uh, you know, Frisco residents, stand to gain from a, a yes vote on 2B, uh, you know, f- from this passing? Well, I think the delivery of a workforce housing project, regardless of typology, whether they be one bedroom, two bedroom, studio units, whether they be rental properties or perhaps sold, will begin to address again this, this very, very thorny challenge we have with respect to workforce, workforce housing, availability of housing to help small businesses succeed. Okay. Um, uh, flip side of that question then, uh, what do you think uh, residents, uh, you know, who are opposed to this, what, what do you think residents would stand to lose if this property does, you know, end up being developed, uh, does change from what it currently is and what it has been for, for a long time? In my opinion, very little. Okay. Um, I, I think with 80 some percent of the landmass in Summit County as federally protected designated open space we are after all surrounded by national forest that we need to be cognizant of that as we attempt to respond to the challenges in the community with respect to the delivery of housing. Okay. And I'm not sure if you can speak to this, you know, as a member of the, uh, the housing task force, but if, if to be were to fail, um, I guess, w- what are the next steps then? What, what happens after that? Does the, uh, the focus then shift to some of those other sites that were ID'd by the task force? Um, well, I, I think that's certainly a possibility. Mm-hmm. I think it's important to remember at this time that each of the remaining parcels, those parcels determined suitable for midterm delivery and some for future delivery. Future delivery meaning five years out, three years, three, five years out, six years out, will require more study, will require the development of partnerships. Um, One property that comes to mind is affectionately known as the CDOT parcel. Mm -hmm. That's at the corner of uh, what, 7th and Granite. Yeah, right there by um, back behind uh, the Ollie's building and some of that stuff. Correct. Yeah, I remember CDOT just moved a trailer off of there, or a few trailers, Correct. actually. Yeah. Correct. You know, but the development of partnerships like that are a bit more complicated, require a bit greater amount of time spent. And I, I, I can say this, that the Fed is going to raise the bank rate probably today or tomorrow by a quarter point. A mortgage... A 30-year fixed mortgage is going to cost about four and a half to four and three quarters percent, probably by end of month. That fact alone tells the business community that housing, rental, sale, lease, or any other type becomes more expensive. And then the very last question that I had, at least as it comes back to this, uh, this parcel, was, you know, looking through the ballot question itself. Now, again, I'm not sure if you can answer this as a member of the task force. Uh, the ballot question does specifically ask, um, should this be, you know, transferred over to the town? Should this be developed on for affordable housing, but not limited to affordable housing? From what you've heard or from what you've sensed, Would this parcel be developed for anything else, for private property, for market rate? That I don't know. Um, Again, the property is zoned as as a central core parcel that will allow for, you know, some fairly dense development, whether it be housing, whether it be commercial, whether it be a mix. 
I, I think I think further to that point, it has it, it makes sense to think a bit about demand and what will actually be built there, not just what might be built there. And the task force, the town committed to having the task force, and the task force came back and said, this is a site that is prime, ready to go for affordable housing. And so, like you said, that's one of those things that, as far as you understand it, it seems like that is the number one priority for that site, if it were to, you know, if this measure were to pass. Yes, it is. Again, it's, it's, a, it's a parcel of land that is one of those of the three lowest hanging fruit. There's no debt on the property. It's zoned for the use, and it can and I believe should be moved forward as quickly as we can. Uh, does the task force still meet, or is this task force kind of uh, finished up for now? We are working with staff right now to develop a final report that will provide further clarification on our short, intermediate, and long-term recommendations. One of the recommendations in that final report is that the town engage as part of the community plan update, slated for commencement within the next 40, 30 to 45 days, spend some additional time on the intermediate and the longer term the longer opportunity, the longer term opportunities, we will recommend that we complete similar charrette exercise mm -hmm. to illustrate architecture, site, materials, what the projects would look like when built, if built, and, and, and perhaps uh, certainly also a conversation about the typology of use whether they be apartments or condominiums, whether they be townhomes, regardless of what they can be, I think it's very important for us to realize this challenge is real. It is right now impacting small businesses in a, in, in a uh, deleterious way. And, you know, unless we jump forward very, very quickly, the community will have greater and greater challenges with respect to sustainability, with respect to success, and certainly the small business community has to look at that as they look to expand their presence. I think it further makes some sense to ask this question, what do we choose to give to provide to our community? And, and I have to say that sustainability and a strong economy is one of the reasons we are successful, I think, in order to become more successful and to remain successful, we need to build more workforce housing now. Yeah, and, and as a longtime uh, local, somebody who's lived in Frisco for, I mean, you, you, you've got a, a lot <laughs> with your name on it right there in town almost. Uh, feel as though, like you said, this is kind of a crucial moment for the town of Frisco to make sure that uh, it's setting itself up for future success? Absolutely. The town of Breckenridge has perhaps 200 units in development or has been development. The town of Silverthorne has 200 and some units being proposed at the Smith Ranch. Dillon has a number of units proposed. In fact, they're in construction, and I think it makes absolute sense for the town to move forward with two of these projects immediately and continue to look for opportunities and partners to develop the other properties, the other parcels of land that are suitable for workforce housing. Great, Mark. Well, thank you again for coming in, talking a little bit about uh, where workforce housing is right now in Frisco and the future of it, especially as it uh, ties into the upcoming election. Appreciate the insight. Thanks so much. Thanks for asking me to come and provide a perspective. 
Absolutely. Always good to hear what's happening uh, kind of behind the curtain there in Frisco, looking at the future of workforce housing and what is being done to develop the town core. Phil Lindemann on Crystal 93.